Hello everyone. A very warm good morning. I am Ranjit Kumar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Welcome you all for the lecture series on composite materials. We have already dealt about various types of glass fibers in the previous lecture, namely A glass fiber, AR glass fiber, C glass fiber, D glass fiber, E glass fiber, ECR glass fiber, R glass fiber, S glass fiber, T glass fiber, S2 glass fiber, N glass fiber, Z glass fiber and Advantix glass fiber. Now today in our class we are going to see about types of fiber glasses based on forms namely toe and roaming, veil mats, woven fabrics and chopped strand mats. Then we will look into various properties of glass fibers. Okay. Now let's get started. Types of fiberglass based on form apart from different types of glass fibers which we have already studied in the previous lectures. Fiberglass is also available in other forms. The most common form in which the glass fibers are available to us are toe, veil mats, woven fabrics, chopped mat strand, I mean chopped strand mats. Okay, next. Toe and rowing. In the textile industry, a toe is a coarse broken fiber removed during processing of flax, hemp or jute and separated from the chimes. Toes in general are frequently cut up to produce staple fiber. The very light color of flax toe is the source of the word toe head, meaning a person with naturally light blonde hair. In the artificial fiber and composite industries, a toe is an untwisted bundle of continuous filaments, in particular of acrylic, carbon fibers or viscose rayon. Toes are designated either by their total text, a unit of weight which is used to measure the density of yarns. It is equal to 1 gram per thousand meters or by the number of fibers they contain. For example, a 12k toe contains 12,000 fibers. Spread the toe fabrics are woven sheet materials which are used for composite layer where the warp and weft are the flat toes rather than spun yarns in order to provide the maximum strength as a composite. Okay, moving on to the next slide. When fiberglass is in the form of toe or roving, it exhibits the highest number of properties that are achievable. Fiberglass in, in this form is supplied on spools that can be unrolled and cut as needed or fed into filament winders. The fibers of the fiberglass must remain under tension to retain their mechanical properties. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Veil mats. Fiberglass in the form of veil mats has continuous strands of fiber as you can see here that have been arranged in thin piles, looped randomly. The very interesting fact about veil mats is that they have a consistency similar to that of a tissue paper. They are not intended for any structural applications. However, they have some very important uses. They can be placed in the mold that is placed directly behind the surface coat to minimize the print through of heavier reinforcing cloths. Moreover, this outer layer that is quite thin also allows the surface sanding of the finished parts without cutting into the reinforcing fabric that lies below. The second very important use that the veil mats have in that they are 
uh, used with sandwich cores. They are placed over the core directly in order to maintain the ideal maximum bond line thicknesses. Whale bags can also keep the excess resin from falling into the cells of honeycomb cords in case a vacuum is not in use. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. Woven fabrics. For applications where more than one fiber orientation is required, a, fire, a fabric combining 0 degrees and 90 degree fiber orientations is useful. Woven fabrics are produced by interlacing of VAC, which is 0 degree fiber, and weft that is 90 degree fiber in a particular regular pattern or a weave style. The fabric's integrity is maintained by the mechanical interlocking of the fibers. Drape, which is nothing but the ability of a fabric to conform to a complex surface and surface smoothness and stability of the fabric are controlled primarily by the weave style. The following is the description of some of the more commonly found wave styles. Right. When we move on to the next slide, you can observe it. Plain woven fabric here, here in this slide, what we are observing, uh, it is a different images explaining to us about the orientation of plain woven fabric composites. If you can observe here, each web fiber passes alternatively under and over each weft fiber. It has some properties and limitations to be understood by us. Right? Let's move on to the next slide. The fabric is symmetrical with good stability and reasonable porosity. However, it is the most difficult of the weaves to drape and the high level of fiber crimp imparts relatively low mechanical properties compared with the other weave styles. With the large fibers, that means high necks, this weave style gives excessive crimp and therefore it tends not to be used for very heavy fabrics. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Twill woven fabrics. Here in this slide, we are observing different images explaining us about the orientation of simple twill woven fabric composites and 2x2 two two twill woven fabric composite materials. Okay, here in this type of weaving, one or more warp fibers alternatively weave over under two weft fibers in a regular repeated manner. Okay, next moving on to the next slide. The, uh, the uh, of a straight, a straight broken diagonal rib of the fabric to the fabric. Superior wet out and drape is seen in the twill weave over the plain weave with only a small reduction in the stability. With the reduced crimp, the fabric also has a smoother surface and slightly higher mechanical properties. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Satin woven fabric. Here in this slide, we are observing different images explaining us about the orientation of simple satin woven fabric composites, five harness satin woven fabric composites, and eight harness satin woven fabric composites. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. The satin weaves are fundamentally twill weaves modified to produce fewer intersections of the bar and the weft. The harness number uh, which is used uh, like designation typically 4, 5 and 8 is the total number of fibers crossed and passed under before the fiber repeats the pattern. A crow foot. A crow foot satin weave is a form of satin weave with a different stagger. Now what is a stagger? Any idea? No problem. Stagger is arranging things so that they do not form a straight line, especially in an alternating or zigzag pattern. In the repeat pattern, satin weaves are very flat. They have good wet out 
and a high degree of break. Now again, what is a break? Draping is to hang a piece of fabric over something so that it falls in folds around it and covers it. Okay. The low grip gives good mechanical properties. All right. Moving on to the next slide. Satin weaves allow fibers to be woven in the closest proximity and can produce fabrics with a close tight weave. However, the style's low stability and asymmetry needs to be considered. The asymmetry causes one face of the fabric to have fiber running predominantly in the warp direction while the other face has fibers running predominantly in the weft direction. Care must be taken in assembling multiple layers of these fabrics to ensure that stresses are not built into the component through this asymmetric effect. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Basket woven fabric. Here in this slide, we are observing different images explaining us about the orientation of simple basket weave. There are various orientations in which we can form a basket woven fabric composite as explained. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Here in this slide, you can observe all the various patterns of a basket woven fabric composite. How they can look like. There are various patterns here. Okay, let's dig deep into it. A basket weave is fundamentally the same as a plain weave except that two or more warp fibers alternatively interlace with two or more weft fibers. An arrangement of two warps crossing two wefts is designated two by two basket. But the arrangement of fiber need not be symmetrical. Therefore, it is possible to have 8 by 2, 5 by 4, and etc. Basket weave is flatter and through less crimp, stronger than a plain weave but less stable. It must be used on heavy weight fabrics made with thick, which is high tech fibers, to avoid excessive crimping. Okay, next we have lino woven fabric composite. Here in this slide, we are observing different images explaining us about the orientation of simple lino weave fabric composites. Okay, let's dig deep into it. Lino weave improves the stability in open fabrics which have a low fiber count. A form of plain weave in which adjacent wire fibers are twisted around the consecutive weft fibers to form a spiral pair, effectively locking each weft in place. Fabrics in lino weave are normally used in conjunction with other weave styles because if used alone, the openness could not produce an effective composite component. Okay, next. Next in our list is mock lino woven fabric composite. Here in this slide, we are observing different images explaining us about the orientation of simple mock lino weave fabric composite. Okay, let's study about it in more. It is a version of plain weave in which occasional warp fibers at regular intervals but usually several fibers apart deviate from the alternate under over interlacing and instead interlace every two or more fibers. This happens with the similar frequency in the weft direction and the overall effect is a fabric with increased thickness, rough surface and additional porosity. Okay, the next is chopped match strand. The length of fibers in this form of fiberglass is 3 to 4 inches. Unlike woven fabrics, the fibers in chopped strand mats are arranged randomly without any fixed orientation. Fiberglass in this form is not very strong because the length of fibers is quite short. 
However, fiberglass that comes in this form is the least expensive and that is why it is also the most commonly used. Due to the random orientation of fibers, the print through of gel coats is effectively hidden. Fibers used for structural reinforcement composites generally fall into the categories of E-glass, AR-glass and S-glass. Of all the fibers available for structural strengthening and reinforcement, E-glass is by far the most used and is least expensive. Okay, next moving on to the next slide. The properties of glass fiber. Glass fibers are useful because of their high ratio of surface area to weight. However, the increased surface area makes them much more susceptible to chemical attack. By trapping air within them, blocks of glass fiber make good thermal insulation with a thermal conductivity of order of the order of 0 0.05 uh, weight. Per, I mean, watt per minute. The strength of the glass is usually tested and reported for virgin or pristine fibers, those which have just been manufactured. The freshest, thinnest fibers are the strongest because thinner fibers are more ductile. The more the surface is scratched, the less the resulting tenacity. Because glass has an amorphous structure, its properties are the same along the fiber and across the fiber. Humidity is an important factor in the tensile strength. Right? Moisture is easily absorbed and can worsen the microscopic cracks and surface defects and lessen the tenacity. In contrast to carbon fiber, glass can undergo more elongation before it breaks. There is a correlation between the bending diameter of the filament and the filament diameter. Again, the viscosity of the molten glass is very important for manufacturing success. During drawing, that means pulling of the glass to reduce fiber circumference, the viscosity should be relatively low. If it is too high, the fiber will break during the drawing process. However, if it is too low, the glass will form droplets rather, rather than drawing out into fiber. Fiberglass is most popular reinforcement polymer due to its array of properties. As we said earlier, fiberglass is making the rounds in many different industries for all the right reasons right now let's have a look at its properties the following are the properties of glass fibers which we are going to dig deep into the list goes in the following way uh, starting with uh, uh, mechanical strength electrical properties sorry electrical characteristics next we have uh, dimensional stability thermal conductivity incombustibility compatibility with organic materials, durability and dielectric permeability. Okay, now let's start our lecture with mechanical strength which is nothing but the first property of the glass fibers. Okay, I'll just move on to the next slide. The mechanical strength. The specific resistance of fiberglass is always greater uh, when compared to that of a steel. Such high specific resistance makes the fiberglass a very, very, very high performance reinforcement material. Okay, so that's the first in our list. Next, we'll have electrical resistance or electrical characteristic. Fiberglass has good electrical insulation even when its thickness is incredibly less. Okay, now moving on to the next slide. The next property coming in our list is dimensional stability. It is one of the best properties of a fiberglass. It is that it is not sensitive to variations in hygrometry. Which is, uh, what is hygrometry? Uh, 
it is defined as the measure of the moisture content of gases but especially of the humidity of the temperature or uh, atmosphere okay the coefficient of linear expansion is fairly low and uh, the next in our list is our thermal conductivity the thermal conductivity of the fiberglass is low very low which makes it a very 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 useful material in the construction industry okay moving ahead to the next slide we have incombustibility the next property in our list this is another important feature that makes fiberglass a very popular material to be used in its mineral composition as it is a mineral material it is incombustible which means that it does not support or propagate flame okay it also does not emit toxic substances or smoke even upon exposure to heat now the next property along the list is compatibility with organic materials fiberglass is available in different sizes it has an ability to combine with a number of mineral matters such as cement and also with the uh, uh, numerous synthetic resins okay now moving on to the next property the next in our property the next among the property is durability fiberglass is a very durable material as it does not rot it is not affected by insects or rodents this ensures the structural integrity and the longevity of structures that are built using fiberglass now the last property of fiberglasses is dielectric permeability fiberglass is dielectric permeable as a result of which it can be used in the making of electromagnetic windows okay now with this we have gained a basic knowledge about all the properties of basic glass fibers that is starting with mechanical strength electrical characteristics dimensional stability thermal conductivity incombustibility compatibility with organic materials durability and dielectric permeability okay fine uh, with this we are actually done with our lecture today but before ending our lecture i am going to give you a very small introduction about the next sessions okay uh, the glass fiber manufacturing process once the glass fiber uh, is actually manufactured by melting it and passing through spinnerets and the glass fiber filaments are produced by using that the filaments are of two types actually continuous filaments and staple filaments which are manufactured by two different methods right the first is continuous filament process right and staple filament process now the continuous filament process here indefinite length is produced the molten glass passes through spinnerets which spins having hundreds of small openings these strands of multiple filaments are carried to winder revolving at very high speeds of more than 2 miles per kilometer this process draws the fibers in parallel filaments of the diameter of the openings a sizing or a binder is applied to facilitate the twisting and winding process and to prevent breakage during yarn formation after winding filaments are further twisted and plied to make yarns by methods similar to those for making other continuous filament yarns the sizing is removed through volatilizing in an oven these yarns are used for making such items as curtains and drapes okay staple fiber process fibers with long staple qualities are manufactured through staple fiber process there are many methods for producing such fibers in one of such methods the molten glass flows through small holes of bushing where 
jets of compressed air shake the thin streams of molten glass into fine fibers. These fibers vary in length ranging from 8 to 15 inches. Okay, uh, right. Uh, with this, uh, I have just given you the basic introduction about the uh, further topics which we are going to see, right? The continuous filament process and uh, the stable filament fiber process. Okay, in the next lecture, we will see in brief about each and every category of this. Okay, what, what, what will be done in uh, continuous filament process and what will be done in stable filament fiber process and uh, how those will be done and what are the other different procedures we have and if possible we will go through even some video lectures or um, some videos so that we will get up a very good picture about it and then after that we will move on to applications, applications of all the glass fibers the various forms of glass fibers we have a lot number of forms of glass fibers so we will see we will look into all the applications starting from aerospace industries chemical industries marine industries what not every industry what you mention a thing we will find the application of a glass fiber a reinforced composite there polymer composite there okay so with this i'm going to end my session and we'll move uh, and uh, uh, we'll meet in the next lecture for discussing about the next few topics. Okay, thank you.